Hey guys, my name is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. In today's video, we're gonna get into five habits that make you play worse as a tennis player. So, let's get into this video. Not maybe a fun topic, but it's a topic you have gotta listen to if you want to play better tennis. Because I'm telling you, as a tennis coach, this happens all the time across all levels of tennis. So, this goes out to beginner tennis players, intermediate tennis players, advanced tennis players, the young, the old, everybody can benefit from this lesson. So let's get right into it. Number one, not moving your feet. For tennis coaches all over the world, for the love of God, please move your feet. It's so weird because it's such a hard buy-in for a coach to get their player to move their feet. Again, regardless of age and skill level, it's one of the things that coaches have to say over and over and over again. You're not moving your feet. Move your feet. Okay? And that goes into also, it doesn't have anything to do with speed. We're not asking you to magically get faster. What we're asking is to have a nice little shuffle in between shots, split step, so you're ready to get to the ball. And here's the thing. Once you start to move your feet the way a coach wants you to move your feet, and it's not as hard as you think it is, you're gonna start playing better tennis. You're gonna get into what I call a flow state. Do you wanna play in the zone today? Then go out there and move your feet and see what happens, okay? Because when you do this, you're gonna start to flow to the ball, like you're floating, and you're not gonna be thinking about your shot so much like maybe lots of times you are when you're not moving your feet. You're gonna feel proactive, you're gonna feel early, you're gonna feel great, it's gonna be great. So just move your feet if you wanna stop playing worse tennis. Okay, number two, and this kinda of goes into number one, but it's a little different. Giving up on shots, especially in practice. One of the biggest things, even yesterday, we're out with our juniors, and it's kind of weird. When a ball goes short and bounces twice in front of them, they, they, you know, they're hitting so hard for the baseline, they're grunting, rah, rah, rah. A ball lands a little short and they just let it bounce twice. Like, that's okay to let the ball bounce twice. You're gonna lose a point if you let the ball bounce twice in the court, people. Practice running for those balls that are just going into the service box. You know those little, like, little floater balls that bounce in the service box and you just let them bounce again, then you hit the ball and you continue your rally when you're practicing? Don't let that happen. You're playing your whole point from the baseline. This is why you play, right? So when you play from the baseline, you break your opponent down to get some kind of you know, weak ball that's short. Lots of times when you hit a good shot, the reply is gonna be somewhat awkward, mistimed, you might consider it lucky, and it's gonna be in a weird position. When you learn that that's actually a reward to end the point rather than a lucky shot that your opponent hit because you hit a great shot and they came up with something lucky, you're gonna become a much better tennis player, okay? When you run for a ball that's going way out wide and you try, even if you think that you're not gonna to get to the ball, it's gonna make you much tougher to beat. Here's another important thing about running for every ball. When you play a match, Everybody's nervous. Are you more tired after you play a match typically? Most people are because you're working really hard mentally and physically and there's nerves. So you have more tension and anxiety, right? And if your opponent hits a shot and you don't even budge, you just let the winner go by, then that person's able to relax. And then once they figure out that you don't run for balls, all of a sudden they don't, they're not playing with nerves. They realize, hey, if I hit a decent shot, they're not even gonna run for the ball. But if you run for every ball and they're wondering, are they going to get it or are they not going to get it? There's no way they're going to get that. Are they? Oh my gosh, they almost got there. Now they're playing more tight. They're playing more tension. This is what makes players like Rafa Nadal and Novak Djokovic so tough to beat over five sets. Remember what Sissipas said? He said, I realized after the French Open to win a Grand Slam against these guys, you got to win three sets and not two sets. And what it really means about that is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys over five sets is exhausting, that there's a breaking point. And this is what you want to do as a player. You want to make that happen. So run for every ball. You're not running for every ball. Do not give up on a ball and you'll be playing better tennis. Okay, number three. Number three, why you are playing worse tennis. 
You give up on yourself. This is even worse than giving up for running for a ball, is you get down a couple of games and you start to go the, oh, here we go again speeches in your mind. Ah, this is what happens every time I play, my opponents play out of their mind, or I choke, or you know, whatever it is that you say in your head, you're giving up on yourself. You can't let that happen. That's another thing. I love to use Rafa, Novak, Roger, they've come behind so much. And if you look at them, and I think the best example I can give you, and maybe we'll play a little clip of this, hopefully we won't get in trouble, is I remember watching Rafa play Dominic Thiem, US Open, I don't know, three, four years ago, and Rafa lost the first set like 6-1 or 6-0, and he barely won a point, barely won a point. And he somehow looked on phase. I mean, you could see in his eyes he was concerned, but he wasn't having a tantrum. He wasn't, you know, yelling at himself. And then after he lost that first set, he got up from the chair and he ran out like he was the king of the world. And when I saw that, I'm like, this is going to be a war. This is going to be a great match. Sure enough, it was toe to toe, five sets. Rafa ended up winning on Dominic missing an easy overhead because it was a ball. Why? Rafa ran for a ball, didn't give up, got one extra ball in play. Boom. Dominic missed. Rafa won that match. Amazing match. Go back and watch that. So, you know, don't give up on yourself. Know that the best thing about tennis is it's not a game measured on time. You know, if you're down 30 to nothing in a football game and there's two minutes left, no matter how hard you try, you can't come back. But if you're down 6-0, 5-0, 30-love, I know it's going to be really tough. But it's been done before. People have come back in one match as being down dead to rights. So you can do it if you allow yourself mentally to do it. All right, hey, if you're enjoying this video so far and you think it's helped you and you're looking forward to the next couple of tips, why don't you do me a favor right now and smash the like button. It really helps more totally obsessed tennis players get to see this video, helps my channel, and if you do so, you get unlimited B2 puppy kisses. And consider subscribing so you don't miss my next video. Okay, the fourth habit that makes you play a worse tennis is not how you're hitting the ball, it's where you're hitting the ball. Poor shot selection. Okay, so you've got to really understand what mode of play you're in. Are you in offense? Are you in neutral? Are you in defense? And play the right shot accordingly. Once you understand how to do this, tennis becomes a lot easier game. And if you just want like a really simple thing to do, if you're playing a tennis match and you're playing singles and you don't have a good, really great look at a, a shot that's really changed the momentum of the point or to hit a winner, go cross court. Just hit the ball nice, high and heavy cross court. It's worked out pretty well for Rafa. Okay, number five. The fifth bad habit that makes you play worse and we want to play better. But here's the cool thing, if you're going through this list and you're starting to take this advice, you're going to be playing better tennis. So number five, this is huge, it's practicing bad technique. When you practice bad technique over and over again, it doesn't matter how many balls you hit. You're, you're not improving. Okay, you're just reinforcing your bad habit. So what you want to do, you ever hear of quality over quantity? What I'd love you to do is get a video camera, like I'm talking to you right now on a video camera. And your video camera, you, you can't be like, oh, I don't have a video camera. Everybody's got a video camera. If you've got a phone, you've got a video camera, okay? Go to Best Buy, Target, Amazon, get yourself a tripod. Start to film yourself hitting the ball. Take a good hard look at what's going on. And rather than going, oh, I don't want to see myself on video, I don't like the way I look, embrace that. Go, well, I don't like that I'm doing this, but if I stop doing that, my stroke would get a lot better. And then you can work on cleaning up one 
bad habit at the time until your strokes look amazing. And right now, I want to help your strokes look amazing, specifically your serve, because I've got a free serve course. I'm not just talking about three free videos. I'm talking about 33 free videos right now for you so you can start to clean up your serve. So if you do this, you go up to the card section, you download your free serve course, Serving A to Z, which is going to help you with your toss. If you've got a troubling toss, if you don't really know how to hit a great slice serve or kick serve or you want more power, you want the right rhythm on your serve, all that's in serving A to Z. And so you take that course, you go out to the court, you hit your basket of balls, you go, okay, I'm going to do this drill from serving A to Z today. You pick one drill and you film yourself. And you're either going to go, man, I look amazing, or you're going to go, whoa, that's not at all what I thought I looked like. And then you start to clean it up one habit at a time. Remember, on your way out, if this helps you, this list, remember, you're not playing your best tennis because A, number one, you're not moving your feet, you're giving up on balls, you're giving up on yourself, you have poor shot selection, and you're practicing bad technique. Now don't get down on yourself. This can all change, and it all change right now. Like the video, subscribe, and we'll see you all on the next video. It's Pete from Crunch Time Coaching, sign off. Thanks so much for your time and attention today, and good luck with your tennis game.